Hi, my name is Dr. Margot Shek Braylon. I am a assistant professor here at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in the Department of Genetics and Genomic Sciences, and I practice metabolic medicine. So this is a group of inherited or genetic enzymatic deficiencies in the urea cycle. The urea cycle is a cycle in the body that takes care of a toxic compound called ammonia. When you eat protein, your body makes ammonia, um, and then it has to get rid of that because ammonia is not good for the brain or the body, and it uses the urea cycle to do that. It also uses the urea cycle to make certain key amino acids for growth. So if you have a urea cycle disorder, you can have buildup of ammonia and issues with certain amino acid deficiencies. So um, urea cycle disorders can present in many ways. There are milder forms of these deficiencies and more severe. The classic is the severe form, which can present um, in the neonatal period when a baby's like two or three days old and infants will suddenly stop being able to tolerate milk, formula, breast milk. Um, they start vomiting. They can become very sleepy or lethargic. They might have seizures. Um, they look very ill appearing in general, but there are also milder forms where they can present in adulthood. And that's usually in a time of stress or fasting where a adult who was previously healthy uh, might suddenly become symptomatic from high ammonia levels where they become very sleepy. They might have changes in their behavior or maybe a psychiatric um, diagnosis. Um, and they also might be avoiding protein because it makes them feel sick. So urea cycle disorders can be diagnosed really two ways. One is by genetic testing, um, where you actually check the genes that are responsible for these enzymes for differences when we compare them to um, what we expect in terms of the sequence. Uh, you can also send specialty uh, testing through what we call a bio chemical lab where you can see markers of high ammonia or problems with the urea cycle. Uh, these all require a metabolic specialist. In the setting of a NICU or a PICU in a hospital, really the key finding is a high ammonia level. If you have a high ammonia level, you should be thinking of a urea cycle disorder. Right, so as we were saying, high ammonia levels are the problems in, uh, in these disorders. For the most part, there are some exceptions, but really what we wanna do is try to control the ammonia levels. Um, and any time a patient with urea cycle disorder is under stress, then they can have high ammonia levels. And stress might look like um, fasting or in times of sickness, or if somebody has surgery, even um, childbirth can be a stressor for the mother if the mother is affected with a urea cycle disorder or for the baby if the baby is affected with a urea cycle disorder. So uh, in these cases, it's important to work with your metabolic provider to make sure that your body is getting proper support and calories. That might be a special type of diet or um, even IV fluids in the hospital and maybe IV medicines. Yeah, if your child is suspected of having a urea cycle disorder, then it's really important that they be seen quickly by a metabolic specialist. Metabolic doctors are subsets of genetic doctors that specialize in conditions like this. And as we've been talking about, these conditions can be emergencies. So it should be a, uh, an expedited visit with one of these types of doctors so that the proper testing can be done. And in the primary care setting, an ammonia level should be checked to make sure that everything's okay. So before we were talking that the urea cycle is important for breaking down protein. And so if you have a urea cycle disorder, protein is really challenging for you to break down. So our patients work really closely with dietitians or nutritionists to make sure that they're taking the minimal amount of protein they need in order to grow and thrive. So they're on a limited protein diet. They also take special medicines to try to get rid of the ammonia uh, called ammonia scavengers. And in emergencies, they might need other ways to get rid of ammonia like dialysis. There are also new therapies for urea cycle disorders, um, like uh, gene therapy is being looked at and enzyme replacement therapy. So there's lots of really exciting um, avenues for treatment right now. 
And liver transplantation is also a really important component of treatment of severe urea cycle disorders um, because with certain urea cycle disorders, it's appropriate to give the patient a new liver to replace the enzyme that's missing. Uh, patients should uh, live near a metabolic center and have a metabolic doctor that they feel comfortable with and can call in the case of an emergency because it's really important that they are cared for closely and in collaboration with a metabolic doctor and a dietary team. Yeah, so we are a metabolic center, which means that we have a team of providers that care for all patients with metabolic disorders like urea cycle disorders. And that team involves a great uh, network of dietitians. We also have a social worker on staff. We have child life, which helps with the stress of procedures and doctor's visits. And we have the metabolic physicians, as well as uh, nurse practitioners and physician's assistants. So we've got a big team that's here to look out for your family and help you to navigate the care, which can be complex. Um, we also are a member of the Urea Cycle Disorders Consortium, which is a network of providers that have experience in urea cycle care. Um, it's an international network, and we're really proud to be a member of it. And then earlier, we were talking about liver transplantation for urea cycle disorders. And uh, at Sinai, we actually have a, um, a metabolic liver transplant program where we work very closely with the liver transplant team and help to manage these patients before, during, and after transplantation. So everybody works very closely together to make sure that we are all familiar with the patients and that they continue to get the care that they need.